is a part of our brain that seems to be responsible for our sense of where our body begins and ends. When we chant, it turns out that that activity slows down, and so the brain is less insistent on this is where the body is. So you have an experience that your, your boundaries soften. And this isn't an illusion, this is happening. You can watch it on a scope. You can see it happening because we can observe relative amounts of activity in different parts of the brain. And if someone says, oh, I'm feeling really connected now, you can see that there's a diminishment of activity in these areas. When people are doing a kind of meditation practice where they're highly focused, your brain does two things. One is, is it focuses attention. So if you're going to focus on a mantra and you're going to repeat a certain phrase or prayer over and over again, then your brain, your frontal lobes turn on and you concentrate and you say over and over that particular phrase. But your brain also does another thing. When you concentrate on something, you also screen out everything else. One of the studies that we did was a practice called Kirtan Kriya, which is a mantra-based practice repeating four sounds, sa, ta, na, ma, over and over. These were people who had never really done a meditation program before. They did it for 12 minutes a day, and we see uh, very specific changes that go on in the brain between when a person starts the practice and what their brain looked like a couple of months later. Their brain had actually changed over that period of time. They had increased activity in their frontal lobes even when their brain was at rest. And this is consistent with other studies which have shown that people who do meditation-based practices over long periods of time actually have thicker frontal lobes than those people who have not done it. Now the other area that we're looking at here is an area called the thalamus, which is a very central structure in the brain. Not only maybe the seat of our consciousness, but could be in sort of uh, a sort of a seat of our reality. What we found was that when they actually did the practice, this side became more active. So we're seeing a shift in the function of a very essential structure in the brain, the thalamus, that probably changes the way we see reality. Another aspect of these practices is the changes that are going on in the autonomic nervous system. When you engage in any type of practice where there is a rhythmic element, the external rhythms drive that autonomic nervous system in one way or another. They can turn on the arousal side and the calming side so that they have this incredible rush, ecstatic experience, while at the same time having this incredibly intense sense of an oceanic blissful kind of experience as well. There are multiple times where it can happen, but usually it's, it's in fairly extreme states, and, you know, accident, near-death experience, uh, or maybe some very, very intense meditation practices.